Hi everyone, in this video we're going to be examining a few exercises using the rules that we learned in the last video. So let's get started. Um, this is the first problem that we're going to examine. Um, looking at the conclusion, we're going to need to get R if and only if L somehow. Um, I see that I have um, I see that I have R and L I see that I have L's in premises 1 and 2, and I see, I see that I have not L's specifically in the conclusion in premise 3. I see that I have R in premise 1. Um, and examining premises 2 and 3, I see something that looks like a modus tollens, so I'm going to start with that. So um, let's start with that. So I'm going to get, um, I'm going to get not, 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 P and Q through um, 2. Uh, three modus tollens, and we get P and Q through four double negation, and I'm gonna get uh, using the new exportation rule we learned. I'm gonna get P and Q, then R through one exportation, and now I'm gonna get R through um, five, six modus ponens and I'm gonna get not L and R through um, three seven conjunction and now that I have these I'm gonna get not L and R I'm gonna put this in parentheses oops and I'm going to get or um, L and not R and not R through uh, 8 addition and now that I have this um, I'm gonna get uh, not I'm gonna get not L if and only if R um, so the one thing uh, that I didn't say in the last video is um, you can still oh, let, let me let me justify this before I finish um, I get this through nine material equivalents. Um, so yeah, one thing I didn't mention in the last video is um, that you can still do the material equivalence rule if they had different truth values. In fact, I might have said the opposite, um, but this isn't actually the material equivalence as um, as it's normally stated. Um, when the material, when one of the bijunks, as I call them, or the components. Um, these things on the side of the biconditional, when they have different, when one of them has a different truth value than the other, the truth value of the of the biconditional is inverted. Um, so normally, when they have the same truth values, it's the truth value is true, false, false, true, and when they have different values, the truth values is false, true, true, false. Um, so when the truth values are false, true, true, false, these two are material are materially. Uh, they're, well, they're replaceable with one another, and um, they have the same truth values. Um, and so, in that case, you can replace one with the other. Um, I mean, because they have different truth values, there might be a different rule uh, for replacing one with the other, but I, I don't know it <laughs> if there is one, and I, I don't think it's that big of a deal um, to just call it the material equivalence rule. Um, so, that's problem 10. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, now let's take a look at um, problem, well the next problem. Um, so let's take a look at this problem. Now the first thing I want to say about this problem is it's hard, it's really hard, um, and it's tricky. Um, this problem is around 32 to 33 lines in total and uh, just trying to make this video I actually had to um, I actually had to stop and think about what I did with this problem and it actually took me a few seconds to remember exactly what the steps were. Now as you can see there's a lot going on um, in pretty much every premise except for premise one. Um, you have all these really complicated conditionals um, and the only thing I can really see to start with is premise one. So that's what I'm going to start with. I'm going to get um, I'm going to get P I'm gonna get P then Q and Q then P. And I'm gonna get this through uh, 
uh, one material equivalence. Now that I have this, I'm going to get P then Q through um, six uh, simplification. And now that I have this, this is where it's going to get tricky. Um, so let's see. Uh, I'm going to get P then Q, P then Q, or um, uh, not X. Um, and I'm going to get this through eight addition. Um, now that I have this, I'm going to get not x or um, p then q, and I'm going to get this through um, eight commutative. I made a mistake here. Uh, I meant uh, seven addition. I'm going to get this. I'm going to get nine through eight commutative. And uh, now that I have this, I'm going to get x then p then q and I'm going to get this through um, nine material implication um, so let's see and now that I have this I'm going to get x and p then q I'm going to get this through ten exportation um, now that I have this uh, I can get R through um, three eleven modus ponens. So I just want to stop for a second and uh, re-examine what we just did. So um, using premise uh, with premise eight, I was able to uh, to add not x, and with this not x, I was able to do to make a, a new conditional um, that really that really mimics. Uh, that really mimics, you know, something like an exportation rule would be. And then once I did this, I was able to export it and get, you know, uh, pretty much the antecedent in pre the antecedent in premise uh, in the conditional premise three. And once I did that, I was able to get modus ponens. Um, so now I have R. Let's see um, if there's anything I can do with R. Well, I certainly see R in premise three, in premise two, and in premise five, but I'm still not really sure what to do with it yet. Um, so what else can I work with? Well, I have Q then P that I haven't used. So I'm going to try to use that and see what I can use that for. Um, so I'm going to get Q then P and uh, P then Q. And I'm going to get this through... Um, I'm going to get this through 6... Uh, through six commutative, and once I do that, I'm gonna get Q then P. I'm gonna get this through um, thirteen, uh, thirteen simplification. Uh, I'm just gonna scroll the camera down a little bit uh, so we can add a couple more lines. So I'm gonna get this through thirteen simplification, and uh, now that I do that, let's see. Um, if we can do anything with Q then P. Um, so um, I see that I have something similar to uh, Q then P in. Well, I have Q then P in premises three and four. Um, we've already used Q and P. Uh, we already used P then Q in premise three. So let's try to use Q then P in premise four. I see that they're negated. Um, so maybe they're transposed. So let's try transposing them. Uh, not P, then not Q through, um, we, we do this through um, four, 14 transposition. Okay, um, now that we did this, let's do not P, then uh, not Q, and then, or hmm, let's take a good look at um, at what's in premise four. So we see that there's a G there, and the G is negated. Um, so since the G is negated, if I did material equivalence on it, on a negated G, it it would go away. And since I don't want it to go away, I'm just gonna add a regular G. I'm gonna do this through 15 uh, addition. Now that I've done this, I'm gonna get 
g or not p then not q and I'm going to do this through um, 16 uh, commutative and now that I've done that I'm going to get not not g or not p then not q I'm going to do this through 17 I'm going to do this through 17 double negation uh, I'm going to scroll my camera down a little bit more um, and once I've done this I'm going to get not g then not p then not q I'm going to do this through 18 material uh, implication um, so now that I have this let's see let's scroll it briefly to to see um, okay so this is our premise for that we're trying to get um, so let's see we're trying to get not G and not P so we can get that using not G and not P uh, then not Q that's what we were trying to get we can do that using premise 19 and exportation so now that we have that we can get not T through um, through four uh, twenty um, modus ponens. So essentially, the strategy we did for premise four is really similar to the one we had done earlier with um, with premise three. Um, so it's pretty identical. Um, we did p then q. Uh, we we pretty much did the same thing except. The only thing that we, the only difference is that we transposed um, Q then P, but other than that, it's basically the same thing. Um, so now we have a R and we have a not T. Let's let's see if there's anything else we can work with. So I see a not T in premise two. Um, so I see a T in premise two, and now that we have a not T in premise twenty one, uh, we might be able to do a modus tollens. So I want to do the modus tollens. So not R then L then T. So if we have a not t, we're going to get a um, we're going to get not not uh, r then l, and we're going to get this through two twenty one modus tollens. Now that we have that. We're going to get r then l through. Um, let me scroll this down a little bit more. We're going to get R then L through 22 double negation. Let's scroll this down a little bit more because I keep running out of space. Okay, um, we're going to get R then L through uh, double negation. And we have R in premise 12. So we're going to get L through um, 12, uh, 23 modus ponens. Now that we have L, let's see if there's anything we can do we can use L for in our um, addition in our initial premises um, so I don't see L anywhere in any of our premises but it, it's right here in the conclusion um, I'm gonna use L then P somewhere so I'm probably just gonna use addition on L and get L or P but I need to get K or Q first so let's see I see a K in premise in premise um, in premise five, uh, so I'm gonna have to to do that. I'm gonna need to get not not R then T. Um, all right, so let's see. Uh, this next step is something else I haven't formally taught you guys yet. So it's gonna seem a bit weird, um, but it's not that unintuitive. So I'll explain it to you right now. Uh, I'm gonna get um, R and uh, not T and I'm gonna get this through um, 12 uh, get this through 12 21 conjunction um, and now they have R and not T I'm gonna get not not R and not T and I'm going to get this through 25 uh, double negation and now they have this I'm gonna get um, not R then not not R then T 
and I'm gonna get this through uh, 26 um, to 26 De Morgans. All right, so I I didn't officially explain this uh, this way of doing De Morgans, um, but what I want to so remember with the implication rule. Um, the implication rule says that you know the the rule of replacement is um, uh, p p p then q is logically equivalent to not p or q, right? So if you negate not p or q, what do you get? Well, you'd get not not p and right. The or would change to an and, and you'd get not q, right? So not not p and not q which would be P and not Q, or R and not T. So when you have this in such a structure, you essentially just have a negated conditional, uh, which is what we have in Prems 27. Um, so that's essentially how you use that form of De Morgan's um, to get a, get a negated conditional, which we have in premise 5. Um, and so now that we have the negated conditional, now that we have the antecedent in premise 5, we can get uh, not t, we can get not t then k. So we'll get not t then k, and we get that through, uh, I believe, um, 527 uh, modus ponens. And now that we have this not t then k, uh, I have not t in premise. Um, I have not t in premise 21, so I can get k through um, 21, 28 modus ponens. Um, let me scroll down a little bit more. Um, now that I have this, uh, let's see, I have k and I have l, so let's see. Uh, what's our conclusion again? Our conclusion it has k or q and l or p, so let's get k or q. So I'm going to get K or Q through um, 29 addition, and I'm going to get, uh, it's L or P, I believe. I'm just going to double check. L or P in the conclusion. So I'm going to get L or P through, um, let's see, where's L? <laughs> uh, it's in 24. So through 24 addition. And now that I have this, I'm going to get K or Q and uh, L or P, I'll put these in parentheses, um, through uh, 30, 31 uh, conjunction. And K or Q and L or P is the conclusion that um, we were trying to get in premise, well, the conclusion we we're trying to get. So um, this is a problem. It's really long. <laughs> Uh, it's really tricky, um, but I put a lot of time into it, and uh, I hope that you were able to get some get some advantage of it, and <laughs> and that you're able to enjoy uh, such a tricky and difficult problem. Um, so this is the end of our natural deduction series. Um, well, we're, this is the end of the 18 rules of inference that we're that we're learning. Uh, we're going to be starting on conditional proofs in the next video. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks.